Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome along to Shamrock Valley. My name is Jack, uh, the the owner and uh, kind of propri proprietor of uh, Brian's Grass and Grain. And what we're doing today, we are well, we're bringing you along for a ride. Really, we are um, going to document my kind of business for a little while. Being asked to do this by by a YouTuber, uh, he wanted me to document what he, what we got up to on a kind of a daily, monthly, seasonal um, schedule. So here we are, and we are well. Today we're going to go for a bit of a drive around. We're going to see some customers and see some clients, and uh, get a few contracts up and rolling. And we're going to have a look through, drive through the region, show you where we work, and then ultimately probably ending up having a look at some of our kit we've got as well. Uh, but as I say, my name's Jack. This is my Land Rover. Today we are down at the port, which is also the BGA, and we've just been securing as the ferry goes through the um, through the tunnel there. We've just been securing our contracts with the local biogas plant uh, for the foreseeable future for the next 12 months. So that's um, contracts for silage and hay and straw, uh, all of which comes here and is burnt eventually. Um, the silage goes into the uh, BJ uh, processors over there where it is turned into uh, energy. Uh, they burn the straw off as well here for energy. Some of the hay I believe actually gets exported but uh, that's not my bother. My bother is that as long as I get the, make the good price for it all is well. Uh, so we are, yeah we've down here we've secured our, uh, we've secured our contract. So our contract is in the region of a thousand tons all in at the moment of our own work. Uh, so that will be a thousand tons for silage and uh, for hay, and then there's about um, for straw. We've got about 200 tons of straw as well, which is plenty. That's about all that we'll be able to put out there, uh, and that's what we'll be bringing into here. So we'll be looking to do that over the next six months. We are late um, late April at the moment, so we're venturing on. Grass is growing strong. It's not going to be too far off one cut, to be honest. Uh, the grain or the, the cereal land, the arable land is coming along nicely, but it wants a little bit of an extra kick, really. We'll have to get some fertilizer put onto there soon. But we'll start with the trusty old Land Rover, and we're going to get ourselves on our way today. We need to go and uh, we're going to take a drive around the area. But first, we're also going to go check in on my mate Jerry, who has a large dairy farm in the region. I do a little bit of work for him as well. We're just going to go and check on him to see what's going on with the uh, silage ground really that he has because we do go up there and lift his silage for him uh, so we'll have to see but yeah i thought we'd just take a nice slow drive today and we're gonna go and take you through some of the forests uh, we have a few fields up here as well so we'll have a look at those uh, but yeah the beautiful countryside that i'm lucky enough to call home uh, and we're gonna get, get working today and see what we can do uh, so my to give you a bit of an insight uh o'brien's is run by myself Jack. Uh, I have a couple of family members who help out. I've got my brother who uh, joined the fleet not so long ago. Uh, he came back home and he's joined in. So he is uh, one of the drivers. So we've got John who drives there and then we've got, I we typically rely on um, ag students from a nearby college actually for the rest of the time when we can afford to bring them in uh, and when we have enough work to keep them busy. So we'll we usually have harvest help coming in for that. Uh, and we do need them. We need them probably from our um, mid-May all the way through really, so uh, we'll have to wait and see what we can do there. Okay, this is an old little road, this is what we call Forest Road. Now this Forest Road takes us through one of the main forests here, but it also gives us some stunning views over, over the fields really. Uh, it really is a beautiful area. And we're going to keep trundling along up here. We have a couple of satellite fields, uh, of which are based up here. So if we and uh, we'll try and get ourselves in through here. It's a bumpy old road, but it's uh, going to light some nonetheless. Yeah, so we'll, as we come to the forest here, it's very dark. There's not a lot happening in here, but uh, we do have a few satellite fields just up here that we're going to have a look into. They have a cover cropping at the moment. We don't have anything in, in those. We're going to be planting some summer, uh, we'll, we'll plant some winter barley into those in the back end of the summer. So for now, they are just kind of uh, having a bit of nitrogen fixation and being kind of looked after really organically which is what we try to do with a lot of our land here we are trying to be as um, efficient and environmentally friendly as possible reduce down our outputs in terms of pesticides herbicides fertilizers and see what we can do uh, with a more organic minimum tillage approach on some occasions that being said uh, this is one of our fields right here and if you can have a look we drilled this directly into the stubble uh, last year so you can see uh, we just kind of covered as much as we can 
Uh, and we'll go into this field actually, we'll have a look at it. It's a grand field, it really is. Uh, heck of a view. Oh, sorry there. Um, yeah, we'll just put into here. Excellent stuff. And there we go, look at the view, the stunning view over the valley. It really is quite something. Um, like I say, we will be looking to, uh, we'll get across there and have a look at some of the other work. But this is, that, as you can see, we've got nice thick cover coming in on our, on our um, cover crop. This is actually oil radishes. Uh, the reason we're using that is because they fixate nitrogen, but they also have a good, long, deep root system and legume as well. So it, uh, it penetrates through any compaction in the field, which is really good. Really does help out. And uh, yes, that is uh, that's how we set up. That's how we're looking. Uh, we're going to head back into the land here. Sure, and we're gonna have, yeah, like I said, we're gonna have a quick uh, trip up to see Jerry and see what he's doing. We have in the, the region of our own grass at the moment. Uh, we probably have that will be cutting for silage at least that will go towards the BGA. Uh, we'll get around that corner. We have about 400 acres, uh, a um, little bit less than that total, and then we'll be making hay on that ground as well. Uh, so we do have quite a lot. There's that other field through that one of our other satellite arable fields. Okay, so we're not quite going up to Limerick, but we'll uh, we'll head left anyway. And we'll go past the old Tesco's here. And here actually is uh, a store where I did my apprenticeship years gone by. Uh, the old John Deere dealership just down there. It's where I I used to. I was an agricultural engineer by trade, uh, and then I moved back into farming after uh, a few years of doing that. Was drawn back in. Uh, we're going to go up in here and see if Jerry's home. There is a chance that he won't be. Uh, but this is Jerry's yard. This is his big setup here. He's got a lot of dairy cattle. Uh, this is his. He doesn't have a lot of equipment, to be honest. He outsources a lot of the ag work. Uh, I do a lot of ag work for him, but he does outsource quite a bit of it. Um, and just focuses mainly on the livestock aspect himself. So he does well on that front. Uh, and he's got a lovely old Renault though. Really nice old Renault tractor. Uh, and then of course his Manitou is there as well. But it looks like all is quiet right now, so I'm not sure where he is or what he's getting up to. But the best thing about Jerry's place, just look at the view he gets from his gate. Absolutely stunning. Beautiful. Anyhow, I'll have a quick wander around the side here, see if he's here or not. He might not be. No, it doesn't look like it. Anyway, we will be looking to lift silage. Jerry has in the region of about 200 acres of silage that he cuts himself and gets two cuts off of that. So Jerry does typically have an uh, average, well last year at least he had about 200 acres of silage, which he cuts at least twice, uh, so he gets a good second cut off there as well. And we do usually, for the most part, we, we lift that silage for him, and uh, that's one of our main silage contracts in the region actually. Uh, so we'll look to see if we can get something similar going again. We just need to have a quick chat with him when he's available. And we'll see what's up. But uh, for now, yeah, we'll just take it back down. We're going to head back down to our yard and we'll have a look and see. Um, kind of give you a tour of the, our equipment. Um, and yeah, just have a look at some of our land in and around the area, really. And yeah, so we're going to head back down to our yard where we'll have a look at some of the equipment and we'll just see what's going on. It's, uh, it's drying out a little bit now, so we might look to actually, there's a, a little bit more fertilizer we need to get onto some of the arable land. Uh, they need probably one more dose of nitrogen just to kick them on for the next growth uh, up until harvest, so we might look at doing that, and we'll see where we stand. But, uh, this is a beautiful part of the world, I grew up around this area, never wanted to move away, and I never really will, I don't think, to be honest. Just stunning. And why would you want to move anywhere when you can work here? is what I always say. There is the old locomotive that rumbles along this line as well. Um, it usually passes through about twice a day. Um, perfect, we'll cross over the road. So this is an old pig yard, big farm. This is Scatterbrook Farm, which we took over about... Um, I left I left the um, agricultural engineering firm about 12 years ago we took over this yard about so as you can see yes we have a like a lovely old stone arch and stone buildings here that have been here for generations actually 
<laughs> uh, like I say, this was a pig farm, and it's no longer a pig farm. Uh, the previous er uh, owners, Mary and John, actually live in the little cottage over the road there. They've stayed in the region. Uh, John was a pig farmer. He used to look after this and um, eventually decided to retire about eight years ago uh, when we took over. Um, so this we've turned it into as much as we can an operating base for the contract. Uh, we have a couple of storage sheds that have machines in. Uh, we, we're able to store and dry grain here. We need a little bit more storage space, I wouldn't lie to you there. We've got uh, obviously a lot of equipment parked outside which I don't really like but I have no other option. Uh, if I bring you over to this shed here, which we'll often just gather up and then spread across the fields because it it's very nutrient rich um, and it's great to have back onto the ground there again. Uh, we have our fleet of silage trailers. Um, we used to have three of the old Marston trailers. This is the best one of the three. We kept hold of that one for now. We took, we traded the other, well, we kind of sold them for scrap more than anything. They were a bit worn down and we bought in two uh, secondhand Red Rock trailers. Uh, we'll probably at some point swap the Ace out for uh, for another Red Rock, but as you can see, it's still in immaculate condition, so I don't really see the need to, to be honest. Uh, then we've got a few little bits and pieces in this shed. We've got seed-based machinery, so we've got the um, combination drill. This is six meters wide. This goes onto our big tractor, um, and it's it's a beast for it to pull even then, but it's, uh, it recovers some ground. It's some great output for us, it really is. Uh, some of the soils we work around here, we have a real range from the light sandy li river land here to very heavy peaty soil up on the hill so we need to be able to cover both really which is where the combination comes in on its own uh, and that works well uh, one evidently one of the most valuable pieces of kit on the yard is this Ifa Williams trailer that um, always I'm very worried that someone will steal that it's locked down there at the moment and it's hidden out the way but uh, the rural crime in this area is quite high and they go missing quite frequently, so we, I'm always very careful about that. Uh, and then we've got some seed in here still, which I might have to shove into one of those old bays out the way one, one of these days. Uh, I think, and then we're going to roll around the corner again. And let's open that up. Perfect. Ah, oh, we'll shut it. So as you can see again, we've still got like the old building see that were used as farrow houses and um, and styes for a long time for the pigs. Uh, there's an old silage pit there that we don't really use at the moment. I am th tempted though this time around because it's typically more profitable for me if I hold on to the silage and then sell it, uh, cart it in and sell it straight to the BGA. So we might do that this year, uh, in which case this pit will no doubt get a bit of use again. Uh, but as you can see, we come to the fleet. Um, let's get that shut. We've got a range of tractors. Um, I pride myself on, being, on maintaining my fleet, looking after them, which is why we've got a range of different ages and sizes. Uh, by far and away, the most modern tractor for us here is the John Deere 6930. Uh, and the oldest machine we have is the Fiat 11090, which is still, that's probably my favorite of them all, really. It works fantastically well still. Starts on the button has a yearly service and is turned inside out and everything is spotless inside. That engine block in there is about new, it's fantastic. Uh, so we have the range and we have the uh, we have a Fent 818. Uh, that does a whole range of jobs, a lot of mowing, silage work with the front linkage on there as well. Um, 6930 uh, does a little bit of plowing for us actually, a lot of carting work and um, a bit of baling work as well. Uh, this old steady machine is the um, our tally handler. Again, it's it's maintained and it's it doesn't owe us a thing. It's worked so long for us and it's just fantastic. Uh, and we really could we'd really be in a hole without that one. And I really don't want to replace it because it's all of our operators love driving it. It works perfectly. It's seamless and it makes no sense for us to change it out at all really. Uh, and then the big tractor in the corner. This is our uh, John Deere 4980. Or 40, this is our John Deere 4850, uh, an absolute workhorse. It's, um, I would firmly believe that if I sold this today, I could make a profit on it. Um, I genuinely do. These machines hold great value overseas. If you ever sell them, there's a value for these in America, um, and you could do very well. Um, so we are, yeah, I love this machine. It works very well. This pulls our forager. Uh, it pulls our big cedar. Uh, it can pull other things as well. It can even, it's been known to do some carting in the past uh, for grain when, it, when the time comes to it, but uh, quite often it'll stick it onto the uh, square baler and it'll just be happy churning around with that one all day. 
Um, you really need to tidy up this yard. There's a lot of grass around here. But never mind. We'll get to that. A few bits of equipment scattered around here. This is where I'd like to get more equipment inside, really. I need another storage shed somewhere. And I am thinking about pricing up the option of putting a barn into here uh, at some stage. Uh, but we've got like a little chain harrows there on the ground. We've got a six meter cultivator. Uh, this is, it's a little bit old. It's seen better days, but it still does the job. Uh, the points will be changed before the fall when we start to really use this in earnest. So uh, then get a good service up there and it'll still work perfectly well. Um, and then we'll move further around the corner. We've got our Abbey kit in the, in the um, old muck lamp here. So we've got a tanker and we've got an old spreader as well, which do the job for us. Again, we do a little bit of grass work. Uh, well, as I said, a lot of our contract work is grass based. So we do a lot of slurry spreading, uh, carting, muck, spreading muck, that kind of thing as well. And a, bailey, a Dooley's trailer here. We always need a Dooley's trailer around the yard. Uh, and then uh, my other option, as you can see, this is the old, well, this was uh, John's last big investment on the farm was to increase the output of the pigs. So we have the old pig shed and the old styes here, uh, which I use these days more, more or less just to store equipment in that I can't fit anywhere else. Uh, the last of the weather sensitive equipment really is I would like to refer uh, to it as. Uh, we've got our hay rake in here. This is just a small coon rake. The old John Deere uh, forager, which is, well, I mean, this is 13, 13 and a half years old, maybe a little bit more. And to be honest, it's showing it. It's slow. It's, um, it has its issues. It always throws out a bearing or two every time we use it, every, every season. But um, again, if we were to replace it anything soon, that would be the next uh, machine to go. We might try and get one more season out of it uh, and then just see how it looks from there. And then crept in around the back there, the light's still on here for some reason. We have our header trailer and header, seven and a half meter header for the Lexion. Uh, I'll always like to keep that tucked in, under um, a roof as well. Uh, what we might well do is look to just see if we can strip this out a little bit, make it a bit more viable as a storage option. Uh, take away these pens at some point and just strip all this bit out and it'll give us some space to store some equipment. But uh, we'll worry about that one later down the line when we can. For now though, we are just going to go away. It's getting a little bit late in the day. As you can see, the sun is drawing in. It's going to be dark here. But uh, I thought we'd just start by giving you a bit of a showdown of what we have here equipment-wise and what we're looking to do. And a little bit about myself and O'Brien's uh, grass and grain. And we'll uh, we'll pick it up for later on. So thank you ever so much for watching. I have been Jack. Um, if you do have any questions, comments, or uh, any feedback, then do drop them in the um, in the channel below. I believe Simulation for the Nation, who is um, reached out to me about this, uh, will let me know of any any questions that you'd like answering, and we'll we'll do our best to answer those uh, in due time. Uh, for now, though, I am going to go away and do a little bit of paperwork. Do some budgets now that I've got my contract figures in and see what we can do. So we'll leave it here. So until we see again, I'll probably come back to you tomorrow, I'd say, when we have everything up and working. And we'll, um, we'll get some field work done, I think. So we'll catch you tomorrow.